God, do not be afraid. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. Lift up your voices, the Lord is near. In the Lord I'll be ever thankful. In the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God, do not be afraid.
To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. To you, my God. My God, I trust you. Let me not be disappointed. Do not let my enemies triumph. Those who hope in you shall not be disappointed, but only those who wantonly break faith. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. In you I hope all the day long, because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercy, Lord, and the love you have shown from of old. Do not remember the sins of years past. In your love, remember me. The Lord is good and upright, showing the path to those who stray, guiding the humble in the right path, and teaching the way to the poor. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. 
He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. It was six years ago this month. I remember being eight and a half months pregnant with Simon. It was not pretty. <laughs> it was my first baby in my womb. I had no family here. Everyone was back in Toronto, regularly calling, but not there to help with the day-to-day -day tasks. It had been a hard pregnancy. I was still working full time and I was so very tired. But I had a friend, a friend who was much younger, much less tired, very cheerful, very positive, and so incredibly kind. That August, she had told me she was pregnant with her first child. She was a few months behind me. And she would come and visit me, always at the perfect time. She would walk into my house like she'd lived there for years, which I loved. She would tell me to sit down. She would immediately start doing my dishes, helping around the house, and just generally cheering me up. We would talk about diapers. Are you going to do cloth diapers or disposable? Feeding, sleeping. Sue, do you have the crib up yet? <laughs> We would compare notes as we both waited, wondering what motherhood would really be like. After Simon arrived, this friend continued to visit. And in fact, this friend took a job in the city, and so she needed to live with me for about uh, three or four days every week. She lived out of town, and it was winter, and driving conditions were not good. And she herself at this point was then about seven months pregnant. And so she would come and stay with us for a few days. I was a mom of a very cranky baby. I had no idea what I was doing, and I was so very tired. I will never forget how unbelievably comforting it was when she would walk through the door after work, herself very pregnant, but truly glowing in a way that I had never experienced. <laughs> she still had much energy, and she continued to be a comfort to me. She would come in and she would take the baby from me, or she would take Amelia out for a walk or to the park. She would make dinner or do the dishes. She would ask me how I was doing, how I had slept, how the baby ate, how the baby had slept, and all the usual mom questions. It was an incredible comfort. It was community when there was no community to be had. Community, friendship, women. It was an amazing time. This dear friend was, in fact, Chelsea. Chelsea and I are the modern day Liz and Mary. <laughs> Me being the Elizabeth, of course, the older woman who was um, pregnant well past her prime, and Chelsea being the Mary, um, a much younger version, um, first child. And of course, then Max and Simon became John the Baptist and Jesus and are still friends to this day. <laughs> Boy. We are good friends, and especially in those times did we become even better friends. And so today we hear this story, um, even in these times where Chelsea and I reflect on what was happening in our own lives just a few years ago. We hear this story with echoes of our own Elizabeth and Mary journey together. Elizabeth, pregnant, way past her expiry date, but about to have a child, and Mary, newly pregnant, scared out of her mind, 
worried and about to make a long journey just to see Elizabeth, to be with family, to be with her cousin, to talk about what had happened and the strange way in which she had said yes to God and was now with child. Mary stays with Elizabeth for several months. They form community. They are family and friends together. They are mothers waiting, waiting in a time that is pregnant with hope and expectation around these two prophets that are to be born. And what a gift I am sure they were to each other, as Chelsea was to me, and as she would say I was to her, I don't know. <laughs> For three months, these two women lived together. They encouraged one another to truly accept the motherhood that had been given to them. They didn't have to wait alone in their pregnancies, in their waiting, in their expectation. Henry Nouwen writes about these two women. He says they could wait together, and by waiting together, they could deepen in each other their faith in God. As they waited together, they deepened in each other their faith in God, a God for whom nothing is impossible, the scriptures tell us. And so God's most radical intervention into all of history was listened to and was received in community. It was listened to and received in community. This didn't happen alone or in isolation, but together the Son of God was formed and wondered about in community. They waited together. In this Advent season, we wait in community with fellow sojourners on this journey of faith to Bethlehem. Tonight, as we prepare this service, the church is empty, and it is a bit hard to conceive that we are not alone in our waiting. But I wonder if we might look at Elizabeth and Mary's story and be reminded that we do indeed wait in community for the birth of the Son of God. Whether we can see each other or not, this year, we especially need to know that we are not alone. We are not alone in our waiting, in our worrying, in our wondering, as we wait this year for the promises of God to unfold in our lives. I have to admit that as I record services or preach to an empty church, I can feel particularly alone. I came home a couple of Sunday mornings after preaching to an empty church and live streaming, and I got a text from a mom in our parish, and she sent me a picture of her daughter and son. They had a big screen TV in their basement, and there were two little chairs set up in front of the screen. They had some popcorn, and they had their stuffies. And this mom said to me, Sue, in the middle of this pandemic, you have been the one constant in our lives. Every Sunday morning, you come into our basement, we sit down and we listen. Thank you for being there. It was an incredible reminder to me that we are not alone, though we don't see each other. We all turn on our TVs and we pray together, we wait together, we wonder and we hope for a time when we can come back together in this place. And we wait and wonder in expectation for how God's promises will unfold in our lives. Here in community, we hold each other up when one of us needs encouragement or support, sometimes not even knowing. We make that phone call or we send that text or we write a note and pop it in the mail. We support and encourage one another. We help one another search for meaning, as I'm sure Mary and Elizabeth did as they sat around in, um, it wasn't Bethlehem, they were somewhere, and they sat in their house <laughs> together um, in a small village, wondering about these children that were inside of them. They wondered and searched for meaning. And so we rejoice also with one another in our waiting, as Mary and Elizabeth rejoiced with each other, and we walk alongside of each other in our waiting. Just as Elizabeth must have listened to Mary and helped her prepare for what was to come, 
you and I, we help each other to work things out, to figure it out together. And other times, we just sit. We sit with each other in the darkness, in the quiet, and in the waiting. But we sit together, trusting in the promises of God, and listening for a word from God as we wait for the light to come. Amen. God, our Father, we bless you for having called us to know you, to love you, and to live with you. Maranatha, the Lord is coming. You sent your beloved Son, your perfect image, and the reflection of your face. He became like us in all things but sin. Maranatha, Maranatha, the the Lord Lord is coming. coming. In him you proclaimed the good news of your kingdom. You forgive our offenses and heal our wounds. Maranatha, the Lord is coming. Keep us in the communion of your Son. Keep us alert as we wait for the day of his coming. Maranatha, the Lord is coming. Give us your peace so that we can communicate it to one another in mutual love and serve the human family. Maranatha, the Lord is coming. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O God of Elizabeth and Mary, you visited your servants with news of the world's redemption in the coming of the Savior. Make our hearts leap with joy and fill our mouths with songs of praise that we may announce glad tidings of peace and welcome the Christ in our midst. Amen.
Jesus. 